Hi, welcome back, episode two. Sorry this is a bit more talking heads, but I don't have enough footage of this part of the journey. So in episode one, we dealt with the strip out and taking the boat back to its bare bones. In this one, we're gonna just deal with the initial restoration choices. Um, the boat is 126 years old, the hull was tired. But before I can progress on that story, I need to probably just explain the different types of construction methods. Um, most boats were built plank on frame, like the mighty tally-ho. Heavy boats, lots of frames, heavy planking. However, the Logan boats are lighter weight boats built with multiple layers of planking, but with no ribs, just stringers. Uh, this method of building goes back to the Egyptians, so it's not new, but it wasn't commonly used at this time. Uh, however, most of the Logan boats were built with three layers of planking, two diagonal, one fore and aft. But petrol was built with only two layers, one diagonal, one fore and aft. At some stage of its life, this outer layer was splined, which basically means that the outer, plank, outer planks were glued together, effectively making for a monocoque construction, which gave it, the boat a lot of its strength in later years and saw survival of the boat, really. However, if we wanted to take that outer layer off to refasten it, which is what needs to happen, we would virtually destroy that outer layer because it's all glued together. So the choice was made to add the missing layer uh, on the outside of the existing hull planking. So that's where we'll pick up the story. So this is the first effort of fitting the new six millimeter carry strips around the turn of the bilge. Propping them in place was pretty straightforward when they were dry, but the moment you apply the epoxy, the dam strips just slipped all over the place, and it took a lot of props and clamps to hold them in place until they were permanently fastened using polymer nails in a pneumatic gun. Polymer nails don't rust or degrade and don't have to be removed. At the beginning, it took me all day to put just two strips on, but within a day or two, I was getting between eight and ten fitted in a day. At the more extreme turns of the hull, I had to use more desperate methods to secure the strips until the epoxy went off. Finally, I was able to rough trim the strips, followed by a first fairing with a belt sander. I was pleasantly surprised that the hull seemed pretty damn fair, and by that I mean I couldn't detect too many hollows and bumps. Final fairing will happen much later. With the diagonal strips complete, it was now time to apply the new skin of four and a half strips, which were to exactly mimic the original four and a half planking. This required every strip to be spiled to repeat the shape of the original planking. Note the black marker lines on the hull which define the plank lines. Spiling is a process where you take a series of offsets from a regular shaped batten, strangely called a spiling batten. With the strips completed, it was time for another rough bearing of the hull. For the record, this whole process of the two new skins took some 40 weeks, or about 1,600 hours. Please don't ever complain about a shipwright's quote.
Hi, I was just um, doing the final edit on this uh, vlog and I realized I hadn't addressed an important issue. Namely, how come I was putting a new skin when I wasn't really sure whether the hull was in good enough shape to accept one. However, we did address this issue at Simon Sadugan's suggestion. Uh, we got David Payne, a well-respected naval architect, especially in this genre of boats. Uh, he came in and he took the lines off petrol as she is now. Uh, we discovered the boat was in pretty good shape because we did have the drawings, line drawings of both Ioma and Kalwala to compare it to, as we don't have any original drawings for petrol. However, this showed that there was some sag in the stern of petrol, and to rectify that before attaching the skin, I put an acro jack under the stern, put some pressure on it over a few weeks, which did help in taking a little out, but not a lot, considering that the boat, as previously described, is spline and fairly solid. Uh, we knew there was an issue with the shear line, but we were going to address that later. So, in conclusion, uh, I would just like to ask you guys about what I might be able to do better or explain better or give more information on. Please give me some feedback on that. And I am well aware of the deficiency of my record keeping blog wise, and I will attempt to do better. In fact, I've got lots of new good stuff to come. Hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching.